Today we're on trail reviewing the RSD Sargent V5 in the third and final installment of this review as a 27.5 by 4.0 rigid fat, slim fat adventure exploring bike. When I'm reviewing bikes, I'm very thoughtful about which trails I take the bike on. I try to pick a trail that suits the bike as it's intended to be used. And today we're gonna to be doing more of an exploratory ride. It's not gonna be hardcore, it's not gonna be super steep, it's not gonna be super bumpy. We have a rigid fork. The only suspension we've got are in these 27.5 by 4.0 tires, but we still have a dropper, we still have modern angles. Let's go out and see what this bike's all about in rigid adventure explorer mode. I think this is how most people are gonna bike pack with this. And I think this is a really crucial way to test this bike because I think most people that are gonna be on this bike are going to have some sort of fat setup. And so it's good to see how it does is that. I love this RSD rigid fork. I've used it in the past. The axle of the crown is noticeably lower than a 130 mil suspension fork. So the front end is dropped a little bit makes the reach a little longer and the effective stack a little lower. I'd probably run riser bars on this if I were bike packing with it with the rigid fork. I just like a little more upright, relaxed, neutral body position. But this isn't bad and you get used to it. We're on some back roads and backcountry trails here in Sedona, which is exactly where I would want this type of bike. There's something about fat tires that I just love. You just feel like a monster truck everywhere you go. Probably not the fastest or the most efficient. The grip is unreal. The suspension is nice from the tire. You don't get to control rebound. <laughs> it is what it is, but man, it takes a nice sting out of it, especially with the rigid fork. And it's just a simple bike. And the bike setup like this helps me focus more on exploring than shredding. That said, I feel like this thing still has some shred in it. Overall weight was one pound less than the 29 plus setup because this fork is noticeably lighter, but the wheels and tires are heavier. I think it's the weight of the rim more than the weight of the tire, but the tire weight's not helping. It doesn't feel zippy does not feel like my spot rocker or some of my ultralight wheel sets. It is a different ride feel than a high performance, super lightweight XC bike. And that's to be expected with fat tires. It really is amazing how you can totally transform this bike with a couple small parts, fork and a wheel set. And to be honest, I didn't even swap the wheel set. I just swapped tires on the stock wheel set. I like the Duroc 50 wheel size. It's a heavy wheel and you feel the weight of that rim. I've got a carbon rim on the front and it's amazing the weight difference. When rims get big and especially wide, I do think it makes sense to spring for a carbon wheel set if you're concerned about efficiency and energy and getting tired pedaling. This frame is not harsh. And I really like RSD's rigid aluminum fork. It's not as stiff as my Envy carbon fork. The Envy's a little lighter, way more expensive, but it's got a harsher ride. Love a simple bike with big tires. Yeah, it just kind of changes your riding experience. And I wouldn't want to take it in this setup on most of my single track in Sedona. Kind of like going rally racing in a Toyota Tacoma. Sure, you could do it, but it's not the right setup. So out here on stuff like this where I'm just exploring, putting down the miles, I do think this would make a fantastic bike packer with a taller bar. Smooth little bike though. 4.0 tires don't make a lot of sense to everybody. For some reason, I really enjoy them. especially on a rigid setup with the suspension they provide. Now I've also got a Priority 600X in for review, the Ryan Van Duzer bike. Excited to share that with you. 
and it's an adventure bike, but it's very different from this. This bike feels like a more serious mountain bike, more burly, uh, more sturdy, I would even say. Definitely more playful. This feels more like a mountain biker's explorer bike where that bike feels more like a hybrid commuter bike that can go on dirt. This has that kind of aggressive rally feel to it where you can just charge. Oh, this is fun. <laughs> I love the sound of big tires going fast. I'm not getting a lot of self-steer. It's nice to have that slack head angle. A lot of fat bikes have sketchy geo with steep head angles and really long rear ends. Speaking of the rear end, I'm running the dropouts halfway back. I can't run them any further forward. We were wondering how it would fit with these big tires and I'll have to show you. Oh, what a joy. There's something about a simple machine like a rigid hardtail on the right terrain. I don't need suspension here. I'm just enjoying the trail and these tires provide plenty of suspension for me and comfort. What a great geometry. And we're back on the Jeep road. So the last Sergeant I had on the channel was the V3 and it had a much longer chain stay. This has a noticeably shorter chain stay, which I like. It makes it feel more like a mountain bike and less like a big fat bike. A lot of fat bikes have long rear ends because they got to fit the tires in there. And that just makes them feel a little bit slow, dull, uh, unexciting. The Sergeant V3 woke up a little bit, but this wakes up even more. This, this you forget you're on a fat capable bike and it just feels like a hardtail. It, it doesn't feel like the most playful uh, goof around hardtails out there, but it doesn't feel old or dated. So this feels more like a mountain bike than a fat bike. And there's a big difference. To me, fat bikes feel more like road bikes. They feel like they have long rear ends. They just feel like they don't want to play. They don't want to slash corners. They just kind of want to stay on the ground and just pedal all day long. And this has a bit of hooligan in it, which I really like. Even more hooligan than the V3. So right here, I've got the dropouts halfway back. That's where I had to run them for 29 plus. We got room up here. I could actually go another centimeter forward there, but we're running out of room in here. We've only got about uh, five mil clearance there. Five mil clearance there. So it's cool that as a 27.5 plus, you can slam them all the way forward, get that super short playful feel. You can't quite get that short of a chain stay with the big meat, but that's to be expected. Very, very few companies can get their chain stays this short with a 27.5 by 4.0. And most of them aren't as slack as this. So bravo RSD for keeping it slack, playful, and feeling more like a mountain bike than a big cumbersome fat bike. If this bike were a vehicle, it'd be like one of these, an 80 series Land Cruiser. It's not quite a Tacoma. Those 80 series Land Cruisers, they have lockers front and rear, coil front and rear. They just go forever. They don't get the best gas mileage. They're not the sexiest, the fastest off-road, but they go forever and just keep on trekking. And I feel like the Sergeant is that. It's not the most sporty vehicle. It's not packed with the lu most luxury features, but it's a solid vehicle that's just gonna get you to the ends of the earth and back. And I think that's what the Sergeant is going for here. And it definitely has that feel to it. It feels quality and sturdy and solid. I would have no problem taking this bike to any country in the middle of nowhere and just riding, riding, riding and not worrying about it in the slightest. It's overbuilt. It's sturdy, it's got those rack mounts. You could load this up with 50 pounds of gear and it'd be a little slower, but it would still get you to where it's going without any problems. I love that feel about this bike. That longer chain stays still fighting me just a little to really goof around and turn this into a, a play bike. But man, what a cool way to explore. Exploring by bike is awesome. I think bike packing is gonna become like the overlanding of the bicycle world. And hopefully it's better than overlanding. A lot of overlanders don't actually get 
their truck and four-wheel drive or get out of the parking lot too much they like the image of it but a bike like this will get you way off the beaten path and I think once people experience that aspect of the sport they're gonna fall in love with getting lost camping going at their own pace putting away the Strava and not racing especially as riders age like me we find different ways to enjoy this great sport one of you viewers mentioned being from Alaska and wanting to buy something like this and then going hunting with it and like packing your caribou out on the vehicle on the bike this out of all bikes I've ever ridden would be the bike I'd choose for that just carrying a heavy load getting stuff out of there it's kind of like a mini tractor it's a tool to help you have an experience and the experience is less about slaying trails slashing turns catching air and just having this extreme mountain bike experience it's more so a tool to get you out and disconnect see the world travel under human power reduce your impact on the planet enjoy time with friends in nature all of that it's like a time machine a bike like this will transport you really well to that mindset pretty awesome that with the suspension fork and smaller tires you can still get that adrenaline filled ride when you want to what a versatile bike I'm not missing suspension right now I think personally if I were traveling like down to South America through Chile and to the southern tip of the continent I think I'd rather have a simple bike like this with no suspension a little bit bigger tires like this maybe 29 by 3 O's and just have a super reliable riding experience I'd load it up with a rack and some frame bags and some fork bags this would just be such a great multi-week trekker I think Baja Divide this would be so cool especially with all the sand you get down there fat tires get a bad rap I don't think I'd ever choose them as my only option for my recreational adrenaline filled mountain bike experience though I might if the geos right but I think they totally have a place here in this type of terrain and this type of riding experience I'm wishing I was loaded up with bags right now this would be a fantastic bike packer and I'm now used to the lower stack and especially climbing it doesn't bother me I feel a little more hunched over I think like some whiskey millhouse bars or money light bar I think that put me in a really happy multi-week pedaling position what a cool bike though I think comparing this to a Land Cruiser 80 series is the perfect description can still do 90 miles an hour on the freeway plenty capable and just dead reliable I'm a big Toyota fan that's one of the best compliments I could give this thing so if I were to build this as my exploring bike rigid posts Paul clamper cable brakes I probably would get some carbon wheels they're nice and wide and then I just go explore for weeks on end and I like the 27.5 by 4.0 there's less tire squirm less self steer I feel and it's so refreshing that somebody finally put a slack head angle on a fat bike everything we've learned from mountain bike geometry in the last five years very few people are trickling it over to fat bikes but RSD is they've always been a little bit ahead of the curve on what they're pushing with their bikes this bike carries its weight really well the wheel and tire combo is heavier than any of my other bikes but once you get rolling it doesn't bother you so much but starting and stopping you feel it when you try and accelerate up something or burst up something it's a lot of metal on that rim 
a lot of rubber on that tire just a lot of material I picked the perfect trail I don't feel like I need suspension here the rest of Sedona's trails this would be miserable on the rigid fork even with that suspension of that 4.0 I'd just be bouncing all over and my wrists would be taking the impact but that's what's so cool what's the point of having a versatile bike if every mode just overlaps the other one by 90 percent you know think of a venn diagram but there's not a ton of overlap that's what you want in versatility for a bike where in rigid mode it's totally different than in suspension mode that's what you want as much versatility as you can get and i think they've done that here it really does feel like two two and a half bikes in one Got a little bit of a climb here. Traction for days. It's not a bike that wants to attack the climbs in this mode, but it just wants to keep motoring up. I think a 30 tooth is about right for this type of exploring up front. It'll get you there though. Some about the looks of this bike just look like an 80 series Land Cruiser to me as well. With that rigid fork and the big old tires, it just, it just looks the part. And looks don't really matter a whole lot to me, but when you see it in person, it matches the looks. It just feels sturdy. It feels solid. It doesn't feel like a tank, but it doesn't feel like a, a XC Whippet either. I love this little bike. I think it was really important to test this as a rigid 27.5 by 4.0 fat bike because I feel like 90% of the users who buy this are gonna have this configuration as well as another configuration. And that is the beauty of this bike is its versatility. You can get two, two and a half bikes in one with this with a simple wheel swap and a fork swap. And it completely changes the character of the bike as well. Running this with 4.0s is very different than 29 by three or 27.5 by three or even 27.5 by 2.6. And that's the beauty of this. It is less of a Swiss army knife and more of a Leatherman. I don't feel like Swiss Army knives are particularly wonderful tools. They have lots of gadgets in them that are all mediocre. Whereas a Leatherman or a Gerber are solid tools with lots of options. So if you have no interest in running this as a 27.5 by 4.0, I think there are probably better bikes suited specifically for what you're looking for. But if you have shoulder seasons with snow and you don't want to hang up the bike when the snow comes, or if you ride in the sand, or if you're interested in bike packing but you're not ready to buy a separate bike dedicated to that the rsd sergeant v5 makes a ton of sense there are so many different ways that you can configure this i still haven't gone mullet i mean there's just so many things you could do you could put a suspension fork on it with the 4.0s there the options are endless and i like that it doesn't feel like a fat bike it feels like a mountain bike that can fat bike instead of a fat bike that can sort a mountain bike and there's a big difference to me most fat bikes are pretty lethargic and dull and not exciting to ride. And to me, they just feel like they're great for pedaling for long distances, but you don't get a lot of bike body separation. You don't get to move the bike around and just dance on the trail. But the Sergeant V5 definitely has some party in it. It's still a jack of all trades and it mastered a few more than I thought it would. It's really good in this setup for exploring and it's really fun. I especially liked it with 29 by 3.0. I felt like you could charge hard on the trails. If you're a taller rider or someone who likes longer chain stays, and not even longer, but not the shortest ever, I think this could be a wonderful everything mountain bike for you as well. However, if you like a bmx -y feel and you really cherish manuals and bunny hops and feeling like a 12-year-old on the trail, this is the greatest option I found that fits 27.5 by 4.0 but it's not as playful as that RSD middle child that just wants to goof around everywhere with those super short stays. So pros and cons. I've never found one bike that's the best at everything. And a lot of my patrons hit me up and say, I want a bike that can bike pack for two weeks at a time and commute to work on and fit fat tires and still shred downhill and hit all the jumps. Well, this is the closest thing I've found that does all of those things. There are other bikes that does each one of those specific things, maybe 10% better than this, but then you'd have to have five bikes to cover what this thing can do. 
RSD is awesome. They've hooked you guys up with a discount code. Use coupon code PARTY for all things RSD to get 5% off any purchase at rsdbikes.com. If you're interested in picking my brain and getting my one-on-one -on -one consultation service where we work together to, to get my recommendations for the perfect bike for you, hardtail or full suspension, I do that over on Patreon. I'd love to help you over there. You sign up and you cancel at any time. As soon as you got all the info you need and you're done with the service, you can cancel at any time. I love helping people navigate this crazy world of geometry and specs and standards and pricing. I also help people with used bikes. And part of that service includes helping people navigate the used bike classifieds and helping people know what's a good deal and what's not and what to look for and what not to look for. And people even send me links to some of the bikes they're interested in and I can spot things that they can't and steer them away or steer them towards certain purchases. I have no skin in the game. I don't benefit from you buying a Trek over a Specialized. And so I'm totally unbiased in what you buy. And I'd love to help you over there if you're interested in that. So that's the RSD Sergeant V5, better than the V3 in every single way. And I loved the V3. I had a blast reviewing this. I'm sad I have to send this back to Alex because I have some trips coming up that this would be a lot of fun on. If you had an RSD Sergeant V5, how would you set it up? And where would you take it? And what are you most excited about, about this bike? I'd love to hear it in the comments below. Thanks for watching, everybody. There's a party in the mountains, and you're invited.